The English lady driver, Mrs. K. Peter, is one of the entrants in the Cape Town Grand Prix, and she's seen here with Rosemeyer and Fondelius. Bernd wishes her luck before she starts in her one and a half litre Riley. The two auto unions are the last to leave in this handicap event. Delius setting off just before Rosemeyer, who starts almost 40 minutes after the slowest car, an MG Midget, in this 200 mile race. Much of this film was shot by Ellie Rosemeyer and is actually a compilation of two races, the South African Grand Prix at East London and the Grosvenor Grand Prix in Cape Town, which is why the auto unions change numbers occasionally. The sand on the track plays havoc with the rear tyres of the Silver Arrows, which have to make several pit stops. times the cars seem to disappear into the sandstorm but eventually Fondelius wins the Cape Town race and Rosemeyer finishes second. The current version of the W25 has been an unaccustomed disaster for Mercedes-Benz who after winning 13 races in 1934 and 35 scored only two victories in 1936 as opposed to the six of their arch rival Auto Union. To correct this situation, a young engineer named Rudolf Uhlenhau is appointed technical director of the Rennabteilung, a new department which comes between team manager Alfred Neubauer and the design department. Uhlenhau takes two cars to the Nürburgring and discovers that the chassis and suspension are very inefficient. His findings enable him to design a new car for 1937, the W125. He abandons the original box section chassis in favor of an oval tube frame. He improves the De Dion rear suspension of the 1936 car and puts wishbones and coil springs at the front. The original straight eight engine is enlarged to 5.7 liters and now produces an awesome 580 bhp. The new car is imposing from any angle and this is the view Mercedes hope Rosemeyer and his auto union teammates will see a lot of this year. The first race for Mercedes is the Tripoli Grand Prix, and they take four cars for Rudolf Caracciola, Manfred von Braukic, Hermann Lang, and their new driver, the young Englishman, Dick Seaman, chosen by the German team after his sensational 1936 season, in which he drove a 10-year-old Delage with great success. Auto Union arrive in Libya for the Tripoli race having dispensed with the services of the ailing Achille Varzi and signed in his place another Italian, the volatile Luigi Fagioli, who's fallen out with Mercedes. Their cars are basically unchanged from 1936. Libya is an Italian protectorate, whose governor, a former air ace and great motor racing enthusiast, is Marshal Italo Balbo. During practice, he talks with Hans Stuck, Bernd Rosemeyer, and Ellie Rosemeyer.
Among seven Alfa Romeo drivers taking part are Nuvolari and Farina. Luigi Fagioli is here with his wife. And here with their new W125 Mercedes are Caracciola, von Braukic, and Lang. During a lull in practice, Ellie peels an orange for Bernd, who talks with his mechanic, Ludwig Sebastian. The opening laps of the race are furiously contested by Caracciola and von Braukic for Mercedes, and Rosemeyer and Stuck for Auto Union. Tires last about four laps on the Silver Arrows, and here Stuck makes an impromptu stop at the back of the circuit. Eventually, Hermann Lang beats the established aces and wins for Mercedes-Benz at 134.4 miles per hour, 10 seconds ahead of Rosemeyer, who's greeted by Ellie. Delius is third. And Paula Stuck congratulates Hans on his fourth place. It's the first victory for former race mechanic Hermann Lang. At the end of April, there's a test day at Arbus for the new banking on the north turn. Bernd Rosemeyer settles into his car, and Ernst von Delius hands him his steering wheel. Auf der neu erbauten Nordkurve der Avus Berlin führte die Auto Union mehrere Versuchsfahrten durch. Natürlich war es dem, wenn man die Auto Union fahren zugemacht hat. Wenn jetzt Ellie da wäre, wäre ich gleich wieder. Fahrt uns. Kommt da hin zurück. Geht der Sachs von dem Kleinen. Jetzt fällt er uns auch wieder in. Enorm, ne? Rosemeyer startet. Rosemeyer proves that a speed of around 110 miles per hour can be maintained through the bend, twice the previous maximum. A month later, the Arbus Grand Prix is held, a non-formula event for which Auto Union and Mercedes have built special streamlined cars. An estimated 380,000 people line Berlin's 12-mile autobahn circuit. The meeting is opened by a vast motorcycle escort for the Minister of Propaganda, Dr. Josef Goebbels. And here is Dr. Goebbels with Sportführer Adolf Hunlein on the left. The first seven-lap heat provides a tremendous battle between the streamlined silver arrows of Rosemeyer and Caracciola. Bernd puts in one lap at a fantastic 172.75 miles per hour. But Rudy wins by seven tenths of a second. The streamliners are reaching 240 miles per hour on the six mile straight. Von Braukic wins heat two from Rudolf Hasse and Hermann Lang. But Manfred's Mercedes fails in the final. Rosemeyer has to stop for new tires and loses any chance of victory. Auto Union used compressed air jacks to raise the vast streamliner off the ground. And here's Fagioli in the other streamliner, while Delius is driving a normal car. Dr. Josef and Magda Goebbels look unimpressed as Hermann Lang wins the fastest ever motor race at the astonishing average speed of 162 miles per hour. 
Fondelius is second, Hasser third, and Rosemeyer fourth. Despite this all-German success, Sportführer Hünlein and Dr. and Frau Goebbels still don't look very happy. While his teammates are racing at Arbus, Hans Stuck has made the long sea voyage to South America for the Grand Prix of Rio de Janeiro. Stuck's main rival is Carlo Pintacuda, driving a 12-cylinder Alfa Romeo. The race begins in pouring rain, and this, combined with the tortuous nature of the seven-mile circuit, enables Pintacuda to match Stuck for speed. They swap the lead several times, and it's Pintacuda who eventually wins, four seconds ahead of Hans. Auto Union are below strength for the Eiffel GP a week later, as Stuck is still away. But Yoli is ill, and Delius, seen here dueling with Husser, crashes in practice and cannot start. More than 300,000 spectators flock to the Nürburgring in glorious summer weather. The start is stupendous. The 550 horsepower Silver Arrows breaking into a thunderous roar, which shakes the grandstand to its foundations. The new 5.7-litre W125 Mercedes has already proved itself to be a formidable racing car at Tripoli. And now Caracciola completes his standing lap at an astonishing 83 miles per hour. He's then passed by Rosemeyer, but fights back to regain the lead. Rosemeyer is not to be denied, however, and by half distance, five laps, he's 30 seconds ahead of his great rival. This shot gives us an excellent view of the handsome lines of the six-liter C-type auto union. In 1934, the mechanics took some 90 seconds to change all four wheels and add 200 liters of fuel. Today, watched by Ellie Rosemeyer, they do the same job in a remarkable 25 seconds, and Bernd goes back into the race without losing his lead. This is Auto Union's new recruit, motorcycle ace, H.P. Muller. Manfred von Braukic slides the W125 out of the carousel in his usual exuberant fashion. And here's Muller on his way to seventh place. But the day belongs to Rosemeyer. Auto Union avenge their defeats at Tripoli and Arbus, and Bernd celebrates a unique hat-trick of victories at the Nürburgring. Truly a ringmeister. <laughs> <laughs> 